Okay, welcome to the Town of Deerfield Select Board Board of Health Sewer Commissioner's Meeting for April 19th, 2023. The time is 5.35 p.m. This is a hybrid meeting in on Zoom and at the main meeting room at 8 Conway Street, South Deerfield, Mass. Uh, this meeting is being held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in-person attendance and remote participation in accordance with the House Bill Number 58 of the 193rd General Court which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, Mass General Law, Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. Please note that while an option for remote attendance or participation is being provided as a courtesy of the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members with a particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the Town of Deerfield will host a meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices. There is uh, remote participation information li listed on the agenda, which can be found on the Town of Deerfield's website. There's a toll-free number of 1-833-548. 0276 if you want to dial in and the meeting ID is 911-604-1580. The passcode is 570012. Um, there is a Zoom link on that agenda as well. So I'll call the meeting to order. Um, this is a joint meeting with the Finance Committee to discuss the FY24 budget and annual town meeting warrant discussion. So I'll I'll let uh, I'll turn it over to Julie Chalfon to open her meeting. Okay. So I will open the finance committee meeting uh, for April 19th, 2023 at 538 p.m. Um, I guess it takes two minutes to read all that. Yes. <laughs> so, um, so first article, let's do the SCEMS budget. So um, Brenda, do you wanna present anything on the SCEMS budget? Uh, we did get that this morning. Uh, really they came very close to what Deerfield was requesting. Um, they had reduced the overtime budget to, um, I wanna say it was, uh, I've got to hear I, can't, I, I can't remember the exact amount, but. $38,702. Yep. Great. Um, so I did plug that into the budget and uh, I think it ended up being $1,700 more than what the finance committee had originally voted. I It, it did end up being $346,898. Uh, there was a dollar difference because of rounding that uh, Deerfield needed to pay. So um, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. Very nice of them to consider our request. Um, very pleased with with um, how they how they came about um, coming up with a new budget. Yes, very grateful for that work. I, I agree. Know. Yeah. Uh, All right. So, do we have a motion for the new number? I move that we recommend the sum of three hundred and forty six thousand eight hundred and ninety eight dollars for the. To Deerfield's contribution to the SCEMS uh, budget. We have a second. Second. Good. Um, any discussion? We'll do a roll call vote. Beth Brown? Uh, yes. Mark Brennan? Mark Brennan, yes. James Cambius? James Cambius, yes. Julia Chalfant, aye. That passes 400. Select board, do you guys want to vote that? We will. Uh, you know what? Why don't you do all yours because Mark has to leave? So there was, you have to do the- oh, okay. Um, all right, so while we're on that, let's look at article nine in the, is there, um, Brenda, is there anything else we need to vote on the budget? I think not, that does Not that I can us. remember. I think you've covered everything. I think so You too. voted the capital when you did the motions last night. So I, yep. I think we're good to go. Okay, so let's look at article nine, which is the SCEMS article. Um, So do we have a motion for that? 
So last night we were moving any that didn't have the number written in the article, we were moving them with the number. So now that we have the number, um, we can vote that one. Right, okay. Um, I move that the we recommend Article Nine in, in the amount uh, in an amount up to three hundred forty-six thousand eight hundred ninety-eight dollars. Okay. Second. Any discussion? No. Okay. Roll call vote. Beth Brown. Beth Brown. Yes. Mark Brennan. Uh, Mark Brennan. Yes. Jim Cambius. James Cambius, yes. Julie Chalf and I, that passes 400. Um, the other one we were going to talk about tonight was articles 16 and 17. We went back and um, reached out to the moderator. Um, he provided some feedback, and his feedback was generally. Um, that he felt like there should be more discussion, basically. Um, I, I forwarded you his email. Um, but um, so I don't know, anybody have any comments or thoughts on that? What article was it, Julie? It's article 16. It was uh, okay, it was so meeting. town meeting. Town meeting, yeah. Is it something he wanted to have more discussion with the body of the the legislative body, the you know, town meeting? Or amongst us. He let me open okay. my email and see more if... clearly. So my I confess my sins here, but I'm the one who drafted it. <laughs> and when I drafted it, I sort of felt like that was a first salvo or something sure. and there was never a returning salvo i expected like there to be a big discussion about it and i just sort of like well let's try saturday let's you know yeah. and just sort of threw yep. something together and um so there hasn't been i think opportunity for very many people to to discuss or think about or comment on it yeah um and so that's kind of what dan says so he says that his role is to remain neutral on matters before town meeting. So he was sort of hesitant to comment, but then he said um, that, you know, there's pros and cons to a Saturday versus a weeknight and the timing in May. And um, he, he said, my concern is human nature will mean that additional time will not be judicially used and all the boards will still receive information at the last minute, but later in the year. Um, and that's, that's probably a pretty valid point. Um, yeah. He said the town council said many towns are in April and May and often have draft warrant out much earlier with not necessarily final figures, but a firm agenda. And, and we don't seem to be getting there. And I, I sort of have the same feeling. I feel very rushed with um, having time to read the articles and then think about them and discuss them just from a finance committee point of view. Um, and then he also said he's been told that the general meeting format and dates for town meeting have been changed a total of two times in 50 years for whatever that's worth. It's certainly okay. not a reason not to change things, but it seems like it shouldn't be done lightly. Um, he would have liked to see some discussion or the opportunity for discussion beyond the limited time and audience that comes to town meeting. Um, so he, he thinks that it seems premature. And he also said that maybe a more formal discussion of what works and doesn't work for other towns. Some towns have embraced like electronic voting clickers or whatever. Um, so maybe there should be a group either a community discussion or like an ad hoc committee or something that steps back and just thinks about the format of town meeting as a whole. Do, um, we, do we think that um, leaving this on the, um, you know, on, obviously it's on the articles now, but do, just to kind of not vote on it, but get town meetings way in this, this meeting and then tackle it again in the fall? I don't, I don't know. I, I really like that idea. 
Um, pass it over. Yeah. Yeah. Pass yeah. it over, but have a discussion, not just go, oh, we're not going to, we're not acting on this article and go right to the next. I think it's worth having that discussion with everybody. And then, as you said, Julie, maybe over the next summer, we have a couple of sessions where people decide that that are interested, want to weigh in on it further and come up with other ideas and then put it back on for the fall. Or next Maybe next slightly year. adjusted, maybe yep. so that it's not a Saturday. Yeah, whatever people- Because we could pass up. over both the articles. What, I was just going to say, what did he say about the second article, Julie? Um, he said, well, I understand the fall meeting article. I'm not sure it's anything more than redundant or at the very best puts people on notice, which is kind of the purpose. The board yeah. can call a special anytime they'd like or not. So I don't know why it needs to be memorialized. But again, I feel like that's just something that hasn't been discussed at length. So yeah. Well, why don't we we could formally decide that we're going to pass it over, but we would like a little bit of a discussion at town meeting. Yeah, see what the general public feels. See what feels. people think. Because we are moving these are, to Saturday. What we could do in the explanation, we could say there's been discussion of this. Um, this may come back to town meeting after further research. Yeah, and just and to and to really want to hear what people's opinions are tonight. Like what what a yeah. If this if this passed tonight, how would you all feel about it? You know, it, here here it is. This is what it'll look like in a little while. Or is Saturday just really not going to work for enough people? And it, you know, and I don't know. I think it's worth really kind of getting people's feelings and not just passing it over quickly. If, if Dan would be get, willing to, to allow that debate for five or 10 minutes. And it's late enough in the, you know, it's the next to last article. So right. like if everybody's exhausted and grumpy, we can just pass over yep. it and move on. But if there's, um, you know, time, there's only one more article after it. True. Is there any, typically don't we have a, a here, we would hear any motions to the select board or something? Isn't there usually a something like that? Oh, yeah. At the very end. Yeah. I don't know if it's, if it's a formal thing or... Instructions to the select board, I think, yeah. is what we used to yeah. call it. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. We used we're to... passing over 18. I mean, yeah. If he thinks there needs to be more robust discussion in smaller groups, my suggestion would be to actually create a group to evaluate this. Um, because the clicker piece of it, that's going to require some funding. Like that needs a little more um, research. And he wasn't, my, my take from his email was he wasn't necessarily pushing that. He was just saying that, you know, that there are other topics that could be yeah. talked about. Other ideas. Yep. I don't know. So we passed over 18. Yep. 16. Um, Julie, do you want to comment about the the second opioid article, um, hold on. Let's, um, Mark and Tim have comments. Is it about the town meeting thing? No, yeah. it, yeah. well. Let's do that first. That I don't want to lose track of. Okay, so Mark, you're up. Uh, do we have to do anything procedurally uh, for uh, the town meeting thing? If, you know, if we're, if the finance committee is recommending that we pass this over. Because you could actually write that as your recommendation. Thanks, Mark. I know Mark has to leave. So um, was there any other vote on this, Julie, on anything? Um, I don't think so, because we're going to leave CPC and Frontier until Monday, because you guys are going to talk about it tonight. Okay. Um, so let's, Tim, why don't you go ahead and then Jim? Yeah, I mean, I, I the bylaws in some sense, it's kind of arbitrary to begin with, um, you know, where we have our April, you know, the last Monday in April or whatever. So I, I don't really know that, you know, having a town informational meeting is going to give us any more information because you could say the same thing about Saturday uh, in May that it's kind of arbitrary. Um, and, and as far as trying to memorialize um, a special town meeting in the fall, 
Um, that seems to me totally unnecessary, but that's just me. I mean, sometimes you will need it and we have consistently needed it. Um, but, um, you know, as to when it gets called, you know, so that seemed, I, I never really understood the second one. It's in my mind, it's planning purposes. People have an expectation that we'll do something in the fall, but nobody ever knows when until the board yeah, calls and, an election. And if you ask anybody, county. if you ask anybody, when is the, when is the town meeting? They won't, they won't know until people tell them because people forget stuff, you know, uh, unless they they're focused on the bylaws. It's something that comes up in Deerfield now every year. So yes, there are certain people who want it, but that's just me. It's just me. So, uh, you know, if, if everyone else thought it was a wonderful idea, then I would have no objection. I just think it's kind of unnecessary. So if it's not a wonderful idea, then we pass it over and bring it back after we talk some more. Okay, so we're Jim, gonna we're gonna pass Jim, over both sixteen and seventeen. Well, let's hear from Jim real quick. Oh. Jim's up. Um, I, I just wanted to say I I really like the idea of having a default date for the fall special town meeting for the reasons already mentioned that it allows people to plan for it and it means that you know if somebody walks into the town offices and stops at the clerk's counter and says when's the fall town meeting they'll say well if they'll know when it is if we're having one you know it's it becomes a default that that is is known and can be planned for the only thing is we've had in my experience uh, some years there's no need to have them but um we have had a few november town meetings um my granddaughter was born on one of the town meetings. That's why I remember because I had Lucy on my lap. So, um, you know, have it, we might not be ready in October. That's the only thing of having a set date. You can always cancel it, but you can always call a town meeting whenever you need to. Right. I guess. So, you know, but for planning purposes, there's a lot of moving parts. Well, to get changes to budgets done, to get, for instance, zoning articles done. If you have a set time frame for an, a fall town meeting, that gives planning board or anybody that wants to submit a request to make a change to zoning or general bylaws some time to hit all the target dates that they have to hit. That was what I was thinking administratively when I read the article, but it's six of one, half a dozen of the other. I, I kind of feel like we should just hear what the public has to say it and then, you know, pass over both these articles and and really get the people who actually invest and come to the annual, you know, annual town meeting and kind of get what their feelings are. And then and then, you know, kind of kick that around this summer and fall and bring it back for the fall. If we feel like there's enough people, you know, whatever the discussion is on that Monday, um, address it again. So we don't have to set it right now. We can set it in the fall. Let's hear, hear from I, people. I would more. like to hear from the people that are there on our Monday night meeting, how they feel about moving it to, to Saturday. Because we have less and less people now at most of our town meetings. And if that is it, it is because people are getting older they don't want to drive at night or families can't mm -hmm. get out then people should be okay with a saturday but I, I do want to hear from the hardcore people that do show up if what they feel about moving on saturday that's all and then whether they want to set up a, a fall town meeting date right. that a specific day yeah and what happens in the instance when we don't vote 14 days in advance to cancel it do we have to hold it and say we really don't want to have this meeting? <laughs> That's a good question. I mean, and that happens fairly frequently when we miss a deadline to post a meeting or do yeah. something. Uh -huh. Whereas we're never going to miss, if we call a special town meeting, mm -hmm. we're never going to miss it. Right. <laughs> good point. It's like, That's true. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're going to move, we're going to pass over those two and get and get some feedback from everybody. Those so are would the correct way to frame that to Dan, I can do the Passover 
yep. vote um, motions, but perhaps some a comment that could be sent to Dan and Lisa is, would the moderator, if we pass this over, are we, can we still take comments from the floor right. yeah. about the two articles? Yeah, we'd love a, a, a quick discussion if, if he's open to that of okay. five or 10 minute discussion or however long, you know, not, not a huge discussion, but just to kind of get the flavor of the room. If you were voting on this tonight, how would you vote in favor or not? And what people's thoughts are so we can, you know, have a better decision on right. it. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead, Mark. So if you're passing over an article, it's a motion anyway, right? So yes. could we just discuss it during the discussion portion of the motion? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, does anybody on finance committee want to make a motion that we recommend passing over this article? I'll make that motion. I'll make a motion that we pass over whatever article number that is. Is it? 16 and 17. 16, both. 16 yeah. and 17. Um, pass over articles 16 and 17. Second. Beth Juan. <laughs> Any discussion? Uh, Beth Brown? Uh, Beth Brown, yes. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan, yes. Jim Cambius. Jim Cambius, yes. Julie Chow and I. All right. That passes 400. So the only two articles we haven't voted on are Article 7 and Article 11. 11 is the CPC, and we will vote that on Monday right before town meeting. Um, Article 7, I, I don't know what's going to happen to it. That may get passed over. Um, if not, we'll vote that on Monday as well. Um, so I think that's all the business we had. We're not going to do... Go ahead, Casey. I just had one question. After the conversation yesterday with Finance Committee about the opioid articles. Oh, right, right, right. Um, there was some, just to the board, I, I didn't want to forget. So... There was significant discussion about this, and the recommendation from finance was to create the art, create the stabilization fund, but not fund it. And it's a little complex, but essentially the money has come into the town thirty two thousand dollars. We don't know what the total is going to be at the end of the fiscal year, but right now we have thirty two thousand dollars. It is not included in free cash. In order to include it in free cash, we would have to have our re free cash recertified for that amount. It's very late in the game to do that in this fiscal year. So if I'm recalling the conversations for these two articles correctly, um, Article 14, the recommendation was to create it, but Article 15, there was no recommendation because the conversation really centered around not funding the articles until the fall article, not funding the stabilization fund until the fall. Right, Julie? That is where we ended up, yes. Okay. Um, so my comment to the board is, is do you want to consider passing over article 15 to actually put money into the stabilization fund? Because right now we'd have to do it through free cash. And we don't want to spend any more than we don't have to. Plus, just because you create the stabilization fund doesn't mean you have to fund it right away. Right. And so Carolyn and I had had this conversation earlier. Yeah, I was just going to say, I would, today. Not, I would not want to move money from our free cash to fund this. At right. Okay. So I think we just create the fund and then wait until the fall to figure it out or next year or whenever. Because council's yeah, suggestion <laughs> was to create it. Um, right. Well, but it we, didn't we hit me until the conversation it. was happening last night that the reason she suggested we recalculate free cash was because the money had come in as revenue, but hadn't been, nothing had been done with it. Okay, Julie, I'll shut up now, Julie. Julie had her hand up. No. But you know, meaning. <laughs> I actually would lean towards not even creating the stabilization fund. Just wait till the fall and figure it all out and do it all in the fall. If we're not going to fund it, does that, or Brenda, well, you sound like that not? I think uh, from what I saw in the MGL that Casey put up on the screen, if I read that correctly, you have to create it 
if you're creating it in the fiscal year, it actually can't take place till the beginning of the next fiscal oh. year. So I think you still need to create it. So we it so need that, to create it. Okay. Yeah, so that we yeah. have it available for okay. in the fall when we want to put the money into it. And, and plus, it. Julie, honestly, we don't know. Uh, the money's going to be dribbling in on multiple settlements. And yeah. we don't know when the money comes in. And we don't want to keep screwing up our free cash. Right. So, okay. Idea is I just to comment back. We, we know we already have the money sitting there. We're not going to do anything with it. But we, if we create the account and we get more in some other time, then it's sitting there. There, there was real effort to try to, to mix all our money together with our group, our collaborative health group, but um, because we get be able to do something real with it. But we decided since it's so complicated and the, and the legislature is still fiddling around with some of the, um, you know, what the rules and regulations, they've already changed it. We just decided we're just going to create the account, let the money come in, and then at some time next year or the year after, we'll, we'll figure out what we're going to do with it. So I, I tend to agree. I think create the account, you're right. Um, Julie had shared the general law reference and it does say that it has to start in the next fiscal year so if we create the account Forgot worse comes it. to worse we fund it in the fall and by that time we'll have free cash certified based on whatever's come in as of june 30th this year the problem is there's so many multiple settlements that nobody knows really what the schedule of of money is going to be so okay it's unknown and, and we don't really have the rules and regulations yet either. So does the finance committee want to vote on that article at all? Or? We are, we voted it last we night. Did. And what okay. we voted last okay. night was to recommend 14, which was creating it. Perfect. Creating it and Perfect. recommend pass over 15, which okay. is funding it. Great. Okay. Perfect. Sounds good. So I'll write the motion to pass over the funding article 15. Okay. Okay. If that's what the board wants to do. Yep. Yeah. Uh, no, I, we can formally vote it, but I would, that's what I would recommend. Okay. And I will add your, your recommendation to pass over the article 15. Julie. Yep. Yep. That's what my notes from last night say. Cause that's what actually Brenda and I were going back and forth on the recommendations. I didn't catch every word. What I wrote down was finance committee recommends passing over article 15. Okay. All right. Anything okay. else? I think that's it for finance committee. Anybody else have anything we need to talk about tonight? Mm -hmm. We're going to skip a, um, minutes and do those at a future meeting. All right. So we Thank motion you, to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. Second. Uh, any discussion? Beth Brown. Beth Brown. Yes. Jim Cambius. Aye. Mark Brennan. Mark Brennan. Aye. Julie Chalf and I. All right. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all for your work. Thank you really for helping. Putting it all together for us. Sorry, Mark, that you had to be late. Oh, I don't mind. <laughs> Thank Take you. Care. Thank you for your help. Okay, so um, we'll continue on with the select board meeting. Um, I guess we'll open it up to public comment first. Um, anybody? Hey, we've got a comment. Yay, Rocky. Welcome, Rocky. Hi, Rocky Foley, South Main Street. I'm a member of the uh, Deerfield 350th Parade Committee. Uh, we're going to have a parade on June 17th from 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. It's going to be coming down Sugarloaf Street and uh, down Park Street and disbanding at the high school. Okay. Okay. Uh, things are coming along pretty good now. Uh, this is just a reminder that anybody out there that has an application uh, to be in the parade, please try and get it into us by uh, this Friday. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and if anybody's still interested in being in, in it, they can look on the uh, Deerfield website and there's an email address for the 350th Parade Committee. Uh, and you can uh, ask for an application. 
uh, or you can even call me. My phone number is 413-387-9779, and I'll uh, get you in the going in the right direction. Um, and we are in need of some volunteers probably for the day before, the Friday and the Saturday to help set up uh, like no parking signs, um, yeah. things like that. And during the, uh, the actual parade, the help uh, with uh, a lot of things like parking, uh, uh, set up for the parade. Uh, Great. And then so. Okay. And it should be a lot of fun. It's going to be a busy weekend. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited for it. I can't wait. We need to kind of get involved and do something ourselves. Was, the town does. And yeah. It's select board. So. Yes. <laughs> we can't our launch it. <laughs> get we, your application. we need to find a way to get a ride somehow. Um, Chris Harris has some boat. good news. Yeah. And, um, Chris, so why don't you tell us about, uh, don't go away, Rocky. Tell us about the. Um, fireworks. Yeah, I'm sorry. I had to take another call there. So I, I missed a little bit, but, um, but we pinned down the fireworks. Um, Great. It, it'll be in South Deerfield and the, the main viewing location will be Frontier Regional School. And we're already working with the school district and the superintendent and his staff in terms of, uh, you know, doing all the things we need to do for that. Um, so, so yeah, I, I'll leave it at that. It's it's like I think that I think that the uh, site plan that the fire marshal approved is maybe you've already acted on this when I was on the phone, but uh, I think we need the select board to act on that because the previous authorization you gave as a uh, butter, um, well, at, at, at a butter that's also within the so-called safety zone circle. Um, applies to where we're going to launch them from, um, and um, and so we we probably need a ratification of that, you know, and then we just move forward on everything else. But we can go live tomorrow, pending your motion tonight. Um, do we have a motion? You, oh, you know what, Chris? I came down here before your email came through. So, do you? What was your suggestion for the motion? Because. My understanding is we do not need to re-sign a permission form. We're just moving it from Walter Pekarski's site to the treehouse site. And, and the town property that is still in the safety zone is relatively the same. Is that Yeah, so, so you have two town properties that are in the safety zone now. Um, you have the EMS, if you will, yep. that, that little leg that goes a wood area that goes to the railroad tracks. And you also have the, um, I think that you guys call it the North Main Street Park. Yeah. Parcel. It's sure. near, uh, it's near um, uh, Pelican products. And yep. so, so, but, it, but you, what you signed, you're totally right. Covered both scenarios. Okay. So okay. you don't need to do that again, but I think you do need to acknowledge that where, where the launch site is, what the fire marshal finally approved, et cetera, because that's now what we're working off okay. of. Okay. Okay. We, well, we never had a fire marshal approved plan until today. Okay, good. So well, we I am extremely excited and I want to say thank you. Thank you so much because this was months of work to get this, to pull this off to make sure we had fireworks in South Deerfield. So um, you want to make a motion? Based yeah, I'm going to make a motion okay. that. Um, our EMS property, especially that wooded area and the North Park parcel um, be in, that's now in the safety zone. We are aware of that now being in the safety zone and okay. um, we would support the fire marshal's the, plan. The fire marshal's plan, approved plan. Okay. A second. Thank you, Tim. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Oh, I can't thank you enough, Chris. Yes, thank you, Chris. Chris thank you, this Rocky. Was unbelievable amount of work. I really appreciate all your efforts on that. We've got to get uh, something going on a on a parade, and uh, we need the public help for that. Do, did you post anything on uh, Deerfield Now and the website and for volunteers? If you need anything, Rocky, I can post some stuff, or you know, I'm happy to help volunteer as well. I'll be away in the midweek, but I'll come back 
Friday, Saturday. Um, I yes. So uh, we I don't know if you've seen it in the recorder. There's oh, been a couple of advertisements, that. and I yep. think we might have mentioned uh, looking for volunteers. Okay, and good. There was a pamphlet probably about five months ago that went out to mention it. So uh, yeah, I it's coming a, up close. It's only two months away. I know. So we can make a, a featured post on Deerfield now and on and put something on our website that we need. Yeah, yeah we're working on the advertisers okay, and stuff like that. So okay. but, uh, all that should be happening uh, very soon. Fireworks will be what night? Saturday. Saturday night. Saturday night. Saturday night. Is that the 17th or the 15th or no? What's 17th. the 17th? 17th. So right. the parade is the 15th. No, no, the 17th. Is 17th. Parade is the same day. Oh, same day. Saturday, okay, right. the 17th. Fireworks are uh, in the evening. That evening. So, Great. And then the chicken bar barbecue is, is Sunday. Is Sunday. Okay. And Susie um, and Tanellis is working on some kid events um, that will take place at Deerfield, I mean, at uh, Deerfield Elementary School. And the friends of Deerfield are going to have like burgers and on hot that, dogs. On that, yeah, on the seventeenth. On the seventeenth for the fireworks and, and stuff. Right. Okay. Yeah, it's kind of kind of uh, in between. Yeah, the parade and then and the fireworks. So perfect. so people can it will be affordable. Yeah, that's great. So yeah, we call that the post parade pre fireworks. Yeah, right. so, that's so we're working with uh, the recreation committee and all that, um, and the schools. Um, yeah. Just to make it, you know, logistically the most optimized. Yeah, situation. that's perfect right there. And uh, and then the rain date, please understand that in the state of Massachusetts, you can't set up or fire fireworks if it's raining. Right. So that's different than New Hampshire and Vermont. And so our rain dates are the first choice rain date is Sunday the 18th on that evening. And if it got worse if it was two or three days of steady downpours monday the 19th which is a state holiday okay juneteenth perfect okay that works thank you very much <clears throat> kim you had your hand up yeah just a couple of quick questions um would anybody have any objection to trying to invite um maura healy kim driscoll and the rural affairs director to participate in the parade the great um we should and, have the ag commissioner um and the ag uh, commissioner yeah ag with, well obviously our yeah, yeah. so that's great that uh, we we have looked into uh that uh, uh more healy and uh did you send out a letter yet? No, uh, if we could get like some well, contact information for you. Yeah. Well, what we can do is Tim is wonderful. He could whip out a quick letter um, and send it out. If I will make that motion. <laughs> How do you feel about that, Tim? We can provide babies to kiss. I mean, that's. that's yeah, well, you know, I have no objection to writing. Um, I mean, you're, you are recovering at home, so. Um, <laughs> You know, if you could. Yeah, no, it's it's something I'd be happy to do. Um, and Thank also, you, um, you know, it's it's a great opportunity to, you know, cement her cement the rural bona fides of this administration to come out and help us on our three fifty. Yeah. So, um, and if if only one of them can come, or if Ashley and one of them can come, or if rural affairs yeah, director yeah, can yeah. come, you know, we yep. put them on a float, make them the right. marshal, whatever we yep. want to do. I mean, oh, yeah. Oh, perfect. Be great. Um, thank you, Tim. Well, I will make that motion. You're going to second it. Oh, I'll second it. Sure. I'm not writing. Yeah. <laughs> you in favor? All those in favor, come on. All those in favor. Right. Yeah. Tim Hilchie, aye. Great. Thank you, Tim, for that. You're going to say aye. I did. It's oh, an aye. aye. Okay. Yeah. So, listen. That's one less thing that poor Casey has to do before town meeting. <laughs> thank you, Tim. All right. Great. Okay. Um, so any, um, Rocky, thank you. Yes. Any select board announcements or reports? Anybody want to hear oh, anything? I just want to say that we had a wonderful rollout of our Deerfield 2030 yard by yard program. That was great. Um, unbelievably good turnout. I yep. was always worried. It was a beautiful day and, you know, I didn't think very many people would come, hey, but they did come this room and thank you. Trevor yeah. for setting up. And I know Tim was disappointed because he was at home with COVID, but um, I just wanted you to know that 
I really appreciated everyone participating. We had good great. time and I think people really enjoyed it. Casey got some set up everything. Excitement going and yes. we'll follow up and there will be more follow up from the conservation district. We have that little grant and yep. um Owen Worms or we'll be doing some consulting because people got consulting, won some great. consulting. They won books. Everybody went away with prizes, even Chris. Nice. Good job. And um so Butter hopefully, hopefully we'll um be able to do some more things coming, you know, once we get through town meeting. Great. Any board of health uh, items or anything? Well, just add, wicked please? ticks. I know, you know, the mosquitoes haven't started yet. Well, there is a few nuisance mos mosquitoes with the hot air that we had the yeah. hot weather, but um, the, it's not the ones that carry the disease load. So you don't have to worry. Those are later in the year. It, but please do tick checks all the time. And if you buy, you can go to Tractor Supply and buy just the cheap horse spray, Bronco horse spray that has 10% permeurethin. Mm -hmm. And that will, you spray it on your legs, um, not on your legs, on your pants Pant and your legs. shoes yeah. and your socks. And um, <clears throat> it, it will really keep the ticks away. We do have subsidized tick testing still. Yep. Um, and our report from last year was that Con consistently a third of our ticks have Lyme disease, but was but we're up to 12% now on those um, other bacterial infections. And that's really serious. Yeah, those, so, those can knock you out. Yeah, there yeah. Were, that's worse than Lyme disease. So please have your ticks checked. If you really had a tick bite, it's worth it. I did not um, print out the minutes, so I don't have them here. Maybe we can skip that till next time. I just didn't get a chance. I want to thank everybody for filling them out and doing them. I just didn't get them in the packet. I didn't get a chance to read them yet. I know they were emailed to us. They were. I just didn't get a chance to read them yet. So I'm just going to hold on those until next meeting, if that's okay. Um, <clears throat> so any, anything else? Oh, Tim. Yeah. Just one thing. Um, we got notification from um the doe that um next week we'll be getting you know, we'll, we'll be getting a letter saying whether we uh, were accepted into the uh, geothermal program or not that, okay uh, oh great how exciting yeah well let's keep our fingers crossed and right we we hear yet or no okay so that that's next week we should hear okay. next week uh, yeah so hopefully that doesn't mean friday next week right <laughs> Right. Um, okay. So let's see. Discussion items. So let's let's go through these tonight. Uh, so Leary Lot update. I saw I saw some plans over there. Um, anybody want to give an update on the Leary Lot? It's on the agenda. Tim, yeah. Tim, did you want to talk about that? Well, um, what I understand is that uh, I'm just going to grab one of those. Look at them. Maybe Casey is better prepared to do this because she said she found signed plans or something. Did so we need to process. I came back from my seminar last week and there was movement by legal counsel on both sides to finish the purchase and sale, but we do need to register the A&R. Um, so the plans are sitting over there. I opened them up. I had had them rolled out um, from the surveyor. And I was just waiting to figure out what was going on because we didn't have movement from council quickly for like a month or so. So I waited to find out what the situation was. And sure enough, as soon as I was gone, um, we were notified that we need to have planning board address the ANR and sign off on it. We need to take it up to the registry and register it and provide proof of that registration to Hampshire's council and town council um, so that we can complete the purchase and sale. So that's where we are with that. Okay. That should um, happen tomorrow. Planning board right? has a short meeting scheduled for tomorrow to do that work. Right, right Chris? Yes, that's correct. Um, so definitely some positive steps on that front. We hope to be able to square that away very soon. And that's going to be exciting for the development of that lot as a whole. Um, and specifically today, I did get an email from Universal Electric that I forwarded to all of you um, regarding the new plans for the placement of the EV chargers. There had been some deliberation on where those would go specifically when the lot is fully developed. Um, and they've decided that the best spot is um, along what's currently the fence right next to Berkshire Brewing Company. Um, 
So over in that corner of the lot would be the least obstructive place to put them, and they would also be very reachable and accessible to people using the lot um, once it's fully finished. So very excited about this project. Um, been having a lot of correspondence with people, uh, specifically from Universal Electric and from Rivermore Energy about it, and uh, happy to keep up with the updates. And I don't know if this has already happened, but a discussion with BBC about kind of what their plans are too. And, uh, you know, the whole idea of doing this is so that they can kind of maybe redevelop their site. I mean, I'm not forcing or anything, just requesting the whole right. idea to kind of make a nice space for them out back there that there's parking, there's, you know, accessibility to that side of the building. And I didn't know if any of that, we've had a chance to kind of meet with everybody around that we should do a, a reach out with everybody on that. All the that outreach we talked about with Jeff Squire. Yep. Um, because I had asked the board several times, you know, what we were doing, but it was in flux. Yeah. So yep. we asked Jeff Squire about that, and one of the adjustments to the contract price included some outreach. Good. Um, we Thanks. have had, I think it was two years ago we had a conversation with BBC about it, but we haven't circled well, back around to it. Yeah. So well, even we had one we had one before that too. Yeah, it's been a um, while. So it's we've had two separate conversations, but yeah, we'll just see where we'll it just, all shakes we'll out. Just see where what I'd like to do is um talk to Jeff about how he thinks we what his recommendation is, because if they are gonna do some outreach assistance with us, that would it would be helpful to follow a path that they've followed in the past that works. Um and so one other piece of the Leary lot update is you have the contract for signature for authorization um, for the project or the Berkshire design contract is what you have for signature tonight. Okay. Um, yep. We had to finalize it. There was, I, I said something to Tim about it. Um, there was some language that Jeff and I had gone back and forth in. And so I worked on that Friday and Saturday and sent it out to him on Tuesday because I didn't know if the contract that had been approved while I was gone had been sent. So I didn't find that out until Tuesday. So Jeff signed it. Um, so he approved the language. There was one other element and that was the the end date on the contract, which can be extended if necessary. But yeah. I figured if we put it through this construction season and next construction season, we should have enough time, but don't quote me, I'm trying. Yep. So I would make a motion to, or entertain a motion to approve the contract between um, Town of Deerfield and uh, Berkshire Design Group for the engineering of the Leary lot. I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, aye. So uh, it's about 54,000, which is about 4,000 more than we thought it was gonna be. Um, and I did find out that we can use our ARPA funds towards the engineering itself. At first, the feds didn't want to let us do that. Um, so that, that could get factored into a development of costs, which I have to tell yep. you, Jeff is already working on. Okay. He's been talking to Chris Curtis, the information that, um, Chris, Nolan received today. I just forwarded to Jeff. He may already have it, but I just okay. forwarded it to Jeff. Um, and then we can take Jeff's temperature on how he thinks we should approach certainly BBC, but okay. start the planning to approach the other business owners and residents in the area. Because I'm right. sure the residents right around here, yeah, folks across the street are going to want to participate too. For and sure. certainly other areas of the town center. Yep. And I just had a question since I haven't been involved in this discussion for that long is I, I'm assuming that the apartments have their own parking. Not really. Yes and no. Yeah. So, you know, one, one of the things we obviously, you know, don't need to do is fill up the parking lot with right. permanent two and three car owner. Yes. And so we need in to be clear ways, about that as we develop it. I think that's a team meeting discussion with Jeff. And yeah. the observations from um, public works superintendent and his staff, um, I see it anecdotally when I drive by in, in the morning and in the evening. There's some cars out there. 
Yeah. There are occasionally cars out there and other things that are sort of parked adjacent. This is why outreach is important. Yeah, just figure out I think there's what people are doing down. now and what, what we right. want, what we expect in the future and how we can help kind of achieve all of that. So it looks good, stays clean, you know, isn't isn't and just it's respected. Uh, yeah, exactly. What it's supposed to no. be, which is a gathering space for people, certainly yep. access to our businesses, right, but also, you know, a place for buildings. people to use. Yeah. Yep, for sure. So Good. those are next steps that Chris and I are going to have to sit down and talk about. Um, but now that we have this information, thanks very much, Chris. I did see this email today. Um, now that we have this information, I think yeah. it's going to be easier to circle the wagons and come up with a plan. Right. And you can see a plan now. Of, okay, here's our layout. This is what we're doing. So yep. have, have deeper conversations on that. So that's yep. good. Um, next up, up is the annual town meeting warrant motions 2024 budget. Um, I feel like we've we've done this a bunch already. We got to vote the uh, budget. Well, there's a couple okay. of things that you guys need to vote after yep. last night because there were some changes to the budget. All right. So, we'll knock them out. Please. All right. Look, can I scare, share my screen? Sure. Uh, hold on a sec. I'm just going to find it. Oh, crap. Hold on one sec. I can't find what I'm looking for. So I put together the motions and sent them off to council, but there were some changes that just happened in the, in the last half hour. So why don't I pull up Ha, there it is. Okay. So I am going to close your eyes, everybody. I'm going to roll screen. I'm going to scroll back up so we can get mm -hmm. to the budget piece. Okay. So there are three items that changed in the omnibus budget that the board needs to vote. Um, account number 145-5410, the treasure collector expense, the new total for that is 31,540, which is a reduction from the original ask. Okay. Um, so the board needs to vote that. So let's take a vote. That's the, uh, you said treasurer collector expense? Yes. Okay. Make a motion to approve the treasurer collector expense, um, 145, 51, uh, 50, uh, 5410 for $31,540. I'll second it. Thank you. Any further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Anything else? Okay. Then we have two funding appropriations, <laughs> separate. So war separate warrant articles. Snow and ice, overage. Yeah. The total discussed with finance committee yesterday was to approve was hold on, let me find it. Where the hell is snow and ice? Sorry. Snow and My ice. My brain is full. Is... Okay, so snow and ice. Which article was that again? That was it is article five. Article five. Lawyer. And the amount that was approved last night for and recommended by the finance committee was eighty seven thousand two hundred ninety six dollars. Yeah. Which is a change from what had been considered before. So right. an approval of this now. does two things. It makes the adjustment by vote of what the board was would have been considering, but it also makes a change to the warrant that confirms the change to the warrant motion, which I had written. Mm -hmm. um, so I need the board to vote that if there is, as as Brenda has said in the past, if there is a, our additional bills that come in, we would pay those through either a transfer from reserve or from right. between appropriations. Yeah, I think that's it'll be small. I mean, the reason they increased it 20,000 was that way there isn't really a worry about having enough money to transfer between accounts. Right. So I'm good with that. I'll make a motion to approve the town vote 
to transfer from free cash the amount of $87,296 to fund fiscal year 2023 shortfall for snow and ice removal expenses. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Mm, right. Excuse me. Okay. The next is scams. The next is scams. Okay. I so, can't think scams enough for their ability to work on this and go back and look at the budget and find ways to kind of reduce that if they could. Yes. So the estimated amount that was submitted after review last night by the SCEMS Board of Oversight um, and approved earlier by Finance Committee was $346,898. This number right here. Yep. Okay. And so the board needs to approve that number as well. Yeah. So I'll make a motion to uh, move the town vote to appropriate the sum of one. One million five hundred eighty-seven thousand. No, no, no. Three, three hundred. Transfer from free. I was just going to keep reading there. Just all you have to do is um, transfer the, from free cash. The three forty-six eight ninety-eight. Right. Three forty-six eight ninety-eight. Okay. That's our chair. Right. So I move. Um, stop from the first part of the sentence. Uh, I'll make a motion to transfer from free cash the sum of three hundred forty-six thousand eight hundred and ninety-eight dollars to fund the South County. Emergency Medical Service Enterprise Fund. I will second that. Any further discussion? One thing I will discuss at this time, and anytime we can get a chance, is, is that we're looking next year to kind of figure out how not to fund this through free cash. And we're really interested in um, putting this into the omnibus budget. Like, so this is a regularly thing that we don't have to wonder if we have enough from free cash to fund it. And that's probably going to take a proposition two and a half override um, to do okay. that, yeah. among other structural changes that we need to make sure we fund for capital expenditures and uh, maintenance on buildings and all that stuff. So I think anytime I get a chance to kind of plug that so that people understand what's what's going to happen, hopefully next year, um, it's important to kind of start talking about that. So any other discussion? So on those three funding things, no, we but we should quick, go through the rest of the warrant. We just got to take a quick vote. Yeah, so, we have to. Yep. Yeah. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. All right. Okay. So we, this is we, not final. Um, I'm waiting for a Casey, response did from we, council. Did, excuse me. Did we vote the uh, um, new police um, numbers? I'm not sure if we did as a board. You know, that night doesn't I don't hurt know if to we just did vote either. It. Let's just do it again. Just to yeah, let's sure. do it again. And that's um, and thank you um, to the police department for working to reduce their um, budget as well. Yep. So, do you want to do all three or just payroll? Yeah, let's expenses? let's do all three. Um, okay. Because I'm not sure we had a quorum. Yeah, I don't know if to my, do this. Mine is updated or not. What do you have for a total for payroll? Um, I have one million eighty three thousand nine hundred and and seventeen dollars. Yeah, is that what's in the? Yes, so it's one million eighty three thousand nine seventeen. Okay. Yep. So I'll make make a motion to approve that for the. Police payroll. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And again, thank you, John, for yes. introducing that. I thanked him too. Um, so the next one is police department expense. The account number is 210-5400. And the amount is $115,100. Yep. And uh, make a motion to approve um, police department expense at $115,100. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. <clears throat> and then the last one is 210-5800, which is the police department cruiser. And the amount is 55000 Okay. Make a motion to approve the... Police Department cruiser at 55000 I will second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Is that, is that something that's coming out of the 
like police department fund or is it coming from general fund? General it's separate fund. under the levy, Tim. Okay, so it's, it's not something that John is paying for from drug right. money or something. No, no, no. It used to be a capital thing we would do every year, but I think it was even before my time they ended up putting it in because it was a reoccurring every year thing. Every right? year thing. Yeah. And when we have a really hard year, we skip it, but. Uh, okay. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Sarah McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. All right. Anything okay. you were unsure of? I think those are the ones I'm aware of. Effectively, if you're voting the articles um, in the warrant, um, that may cover anything else you might not have done. But these are the ones I recall from finance committee meetings where I saw some changes. Um, Do you need us to vote night. each article tonight? Is that the idea? We can go through each article. Um, I just want I think to let people know that I hadn't adjusted all the motions until the conversation with finance committee earlier. That's fine. So, <clears throat> so motion one, uh, article one, I, I, I would be doing, and it looks fine. Everything straightforward there. It's just acknowledgement of gifts and paying uh, elected officials. Um, so I make a motion to approve article one as written. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hill, GI. Ever McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. Great. Um, article two would be um, Carolyn Shores Ness, and that would be, um, uh, let's see, oh, re re reserve fund appropriation at 120,000, OPEB out of district placement at 160,000. That's it, right? Yeah. Um, I know that we need to want to keep it short, but um, I just heard a Homeland Security meeting on Tuesday that the vocation, Smith Vocational is going to add a dispatch class or course to their mm -hmm. um, vocation program. And so how do we appeal to Franklin Peck? Oh, we should talk with Bob yeah. Decker. He's the, he's the you know our rep. call russ and ask him yeah because they now have the nurse program they have the ag program and, and they'll have the dispatch program and and i think they're going to have an ems program and it's like how come we can't get those going at franklin tech because it costs us so much money right to, okay to, to do this down to franklin tech and it seems like there would be a demand for this in our in our area We'll have it's to quite have possible a conversation on the so just the take a note time. to talk okay. to somebody on that okay mm. yeah. Um, yeah if i were a suspicious person i'd be wondering why these programs are being developed other than to find funding resources mm -hmm. true well You're there's, not a, suspicious there's person. a need for it but why can't yeah, but, our own why can't franklin peck offer them hmm. what's all it would be a lot cheaper alternative yeah mm -hmm. it would because don't, don't forget, everybody from Franklin County is flopping down to Smith vote for this huge expense. Um, right. Not just to us. I'll make a motion to approve Article 2 as written. Second it. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Ever McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Make a motion to approve Article 3, which is to... Um, Fix Set the, the maximum amount for the revolving funds right. in fiscal year 24. Okay. Make a motion to approve Article 3 as written. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And I'll do the, um, and that, yeah, that article will be done by, by Tim Hilchey. The next article will be uh, moved by me, which would be to um, uh, adopt the classification compensation plan. Um, for FY24. Um, I'll make a motion to approve Article 4 as written. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, next article is 
Article uh, five. Article five. Carolyn Shores Ness will be doing this one. This is to this is snow and ice. You're gonna snow and ice. Snow and ice. Okay, yeah. good. Yep, that's fine. So make a motion to approve article five as written. Second. Um, and this would be for eighty-seven thousand two hundred and ninety-six dollars. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Nessa, sorry. Great. Right. No, it's okay. Uh, I'm just reading them. Article six. Um, that is the omnibus budget. Yep. Now I may have to fiddle with some spacing on this one. That's right fine. now. I've got Tim doing this article. Is that okay yep. with you? That's fine. Yep. Fine. Are you agnostic on this, Tim? Yeah, generally, you know, the, the moderator takes it over and kind of does each line by line, and then we, you know, yep. all and vote then they the put end. holds and they do whatever they're going to yep. do. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. And you, and you finish it off at the end. Yeah. Um, I, I would just say that probably select board staff salaries is going to be a hold. So what? there's definitely going to be a hold. So everybody, I've been working on some explanation for this, but it's not done yet. Okay. okay. That's fine. Because I want to be able to present at least a synopsis tomorrow at the info session about the intent. Yep. So it includes both increasing capacity for some of the major to handle some of the major projects we have. Um, right. Because they all play in the, the rest of the department sandboxes. Yeah. Yep. We put it all there. Any um so I'll make a motion to approve article six as written. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Article 7 is... Article uh, 7 is... Carolyn? So, this is the first article about the tennis courts. Yep. Um, so we're I have Carolyn them. doing this motion. Um, I'm still confused on this whole article because I feel like we should be just passing it since it's getting funded and later on. Well, the thing is, is you, there's two ways you can do it. You could pass over, over it completely, or you could say, move that town meeting address this article after article 11, which is Community Preservation Act. Right, because um, it's not really up to Deerfield to, to decide that we're funding $100,000 for the tennis it's funny, court. They always write it like that though. It's not it's not Deerfield's tennis courts. It's the Frontiers tennis courts. And it is. They've asked us to uh, appropriate all four towns to appropriate proportionally. Right. You know, the the, um, the hundred thousand dollars and we've decided right. to do it through CPA just like all the other towns, but we could have decided to pull it from free cash if we wanted to really. Which is why I left the article in there. Okay. So, so right. if we move it, the the way that Lisa and Dan discussed it yesterday was, if we you don't yeah. want to put the funding source before the approval. So in this case, the funding for, source is CPA. Yeah, that's Article Eleven. Yeah. So we Lisa's could suggestion was it. to have have the article moved and addressed after Article Eleven. That sounds good. Yep. So that's the way the motion's written. If Dan or Lisa have some issues with it, they will ask me to make that change, make a change. Okay. Okay, that's okay. good. So um, make a motion to approve Article 7 as noted and discussed. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Elchie, mm -hmm. aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And you're doing that one, Carolyn? Yeah. Okay, good. And then um, Article 8. I will be doing the um, so sewer enterprise wastewater fund. enterprise fund. Yep. So that's pretty straightforward as well. Um, any? Um, I'll okay. second that. Yep. Okay. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Never <clears throat> Daniel, aye. Carolyn. Oh, Carolyn, that's okay. Sorry. No, it's I'm, okay. I'm, Focusing in on the next one, went right to the Yeah, and Jim, Jim's working on the next one here. So that'd be Article 9. I'll make a motion to approve Article 9 as written for the sketch. Sec second. Any discussion or anybody want to talk about this one? We voted the new number tonight, so we're right. okay with that. All those in favor? Tim Elchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Uh, and there is a notation at the end of the tables saying that... Um, 
capital expenditures are going to be addressed in Article 10. Okay. Okay. That's good. Article 10 is the capital. Uh, Carolyn will be doing this. Um, and this, this is discussing that um, the D DES front entry repairs and asphalt walkways um, will be funding at $80,000 and the DES air conditioning phase room, which is six rooms uh, for $45,000 will be funded by sales of real estate that we secured from selling the um, Oxford, Oxford uh, property. Yeah, yep. It was left over after we paid off the loan. Yep. And then after a lot of discussion, we decided to fund the highway truck, uh, the big freight liner for 325,000 from capital stabilization. We, um, along with the other towns are, are funding the ambulance. Our portion is $142,343 from free, uh, from capital stabilization. And, and then a hundred from a hundred thousand from retained earnings. Correct. A hundred from retained earnings from scams. And then, um, the cardiac monitoring replacements will be uh, paid for in full by the scams retained earnings at 150,000. Right. Um, and so this that, does use up the entirety of retained earnings. And then I feel like we should talk somewhere about what we're funding with ARPA just to educate people. I don't know so what I, that I was going to do that as an explanation. I just yeah. didn't get all the explanations. That's fine. Done. That's fine. Yep. yep. It would be good to show that. I want to make sure people understand that we did fund a two items yep. through ARPA funds right. like we did last year. We notified yeah. people last year. Right. Same same scenario. Okay. Right. So I make a motion to approve Article 10. I'll second that. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Kim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, I just, another comment. Mm -hmm. um, last night in the SCEMS meeting, um, Lori McComb, who was working on the, trying to put the grant together for the ambulance. Yeah. Um, she has not gotten any response whatsoever from USDA. Um, USDA. So um, we could reach out. I just want to make sure that it's okay with you guys if we reach out yeah. and talk to Scott Soares and say, "Yeah, damn, yeah. I wish I had known that because I saw well. Scott Soares last week." Yeah. Well, we need to. We want to make sure our application is in the pipeline in the right and, for yeah. this fall because it's going to be additional funds for the. IRA money, the Inflation Reduction Act money. Yeah. Yes. If our applicant, we need to get the application in the next month or two. Yeah. Okay. It's it's not. There's no hard deadline because the money for this year has been used up. Right. But this is for we want to get in the line for for this new yeah. release in the fall. Um. So can we um, suggest that we designate somebody to be the watchdog on this because? Like Carolyn, I don't know. What do you think? I'm well. I'm fine. I, I volunteered at the meeting last night to okay, make sure, great. but I didn't want. I wanted you to all no, both to know absolutely. if it's all right yep. with you. Of course. Okay. Yep. Then I will officially reach out and say, Thank "What you. the heck? We need. We want to." Yeah. He was we, at Ag Day last week. Busy doing with a bunch yeah. of other stuff and thinking it's next year. He doesn't have to respond right yet. So yeah, because they've been really great. Um, Article 11 would be so the article uh, 11 is community preservation act yep. funding. So this, this really is kind of what, where we were just talking about article seven, we would hold until we voted this and Deerfield share is the $84,693 and 38 cents for the, um, for the tennis courts. And then it would be 572,000 for the subsidized senior housing feasibility study and land acquisition do they have a piece of land they're planning to purchase? Where? It's the other church. Oh, got it. St. Okay. James. Yep. All right. The old corner. And then. So um, is there an appraisal for this that's been completed? It's, an, it's started, Casey. This is just, you have to, they can only do the go through the preservation once in, you know, every spring. So the idea is to do something for the top fall town meeting with a CPC approval already, similar to so the they'll bring that all back. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We don't even know if we can do it. Right. But it's like the 1888 building. Right. We're just doing the approval, and then you know we we have to wait until we put the actual project together. All right. 
Any um anything else anyone want to discuss? Uh, I know uh, Frank Leone will be doing the motions on this. Um, yes. Make a motion to approve Article Eleven as written. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Yeah. And so just note in the second motion for the tennis courts, I've highlighted Deerfield share at that 48,000. Yep. yep. I put the same table in there just for a reference. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Article 12. Um, you know, the only thing, um, since this would be brand new for Frank, could you just remind him that the 15,000 Community Preservation Fund estimated revenues for Community Preservation Committee administrative expenses is just household kind of stuff? And it doesn't, you know, traditionally they don't spend the money, but just in case they had any expenses, that's why it's there. He might not know that, Casey. Um, He might have talked to to Brenda about it. They were going back and forth on the motions, but yes, I'll write myself okay. a comment. Because people always want to know what you spend your 15000 on. Right. Generally, it Nothing. just rolls back to right. the fund. I, I don't think there's ever been any. Julie has her hand up. Hey, Julie. Yes. Hi. Um, I'm just wondering about the purchase of the property. If it's like the 1888 building, you put it through CPC, but you're waiting until the fall. Like the 1888 building isn't on the list of motions. Do was you want what? to do the same with that other property? <clears throat> what was that again? I'm sorry, I missed that. So the the um the senior housing yeah. has 80 something thousand for a study and the rest of it is for a piece of property. And when y'all were talking about it, you said that just now you said that that was similar to how you're handling the 1888 building, but the 1888 building is not on the motion. You just took that through CPC and then it's on hold until the fall. Right. But this is so that, well, it's similar in the fact that we wouldn't move forward at all until the fall town meeting either. The, I guess the, you know, this is a question of timing. Um, I think the reason why they did this this way, and, it, and I don't have an opinion one way or the other about, is that they wanna, they wanna have the money available um, because right now it's in, a, it's in a bank account and it needs to be approved to be expended for a specific purpose, which would be some number, whatever the appraisal of this land came out, to be um, and and be able to to know going into the fall meeting that they could start drafting paperwork and so forth. But um, that's why I think they did it this way. They would still need to come before um, town meeting, town, town meeting, and capital planning and stuff later on, and say, "Hey, this is the property we're looking to purchase. We think it's this value and all that, right?" Oh, they have to do an application through capital. Capital's okay. holding a meeting tomorrow, but they also have to do a land acquisition article, which we did not have the ability to add into this town meeting. So we don't, yeah, well, we don't have enough information. Right. right. So I would think that we would take that part, at least the acquisition piece, up and if we did a meeting in the fall. Yeah, that would yeah. be a fall town meeting issue. Okay. If if we if the appraisal is reasonable. Depends on the on the appraisal, actually. So it allows them, if everything works well, to do in the fall and not have to wait till the Those annual town meeting. meeting. Right. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Article 12, to see if the town will vote to amend. Hold on. Uh, oh, this there is it. for the taking over the... Oh, excuse me. Taking over the... Uh, deed restriction for the Indian house is that right so it's not to take over the deed restriction it's to create a two-step process to put a permanent historic deed restriction in place um, so what the ask here is is to change the delete the language that was approved in April of 2019 and replace it with a different sent a different requirement um so the appropriation if it if this article if the change in language is approved the appropriation would be contingent upon 
filing the historic preservation deed in a two-part way. So you would file an intent and then you would file the perpetual deed once MHC has finalized their work because they, as everybody knows, they still haven't done this, but PVMA can't get paid until they do. And the expiration on the extension is June 30th of this year. So this was compiled with both council, town council and PVMA's council. So I did a brief explanation. Um, and it, it's really about the reimbursement. They can't get their reimbursement until MHC finishes their work, but MHC has indicated that they're short staffed and they haven't been able to do the inspections and finish the paperwork to do a deed restriction. This um, is silly. I mean, it's it, silly. I, I don't, I honestly don't know why, except that was what I was given for information. So, I mean, you've seen the email. No, I, I, I know exactly. I mean, I just, I just blows my mind that this state can't get this done in three, four years almost. All right. So, so the I, second piece would finalizing it would be finalizing the deed restriction in perpetuity. Okay. Is how I understand it. If Lisa has a change to that, she'll let me know. All right. But that's yeah, really the you, explanation. Two step is needs a hyphen. You know, I thought that too. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> well, it's the, it's the blue underline. It's not me. Yep, it's the blue <laughs> underline. I kept looking at it. I just hadn't fixed it. Um, okay, so I make a motion to approve Article 12 as written. I'll second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Tim Ilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay, Article 13. Is a request to establish capital stabilization for FRS. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have a lot of explanation on this. What I talked to the finance committee about last year, last night, was just letting them know that anecdotally, I've been told this has come up more than once. It has, but hasn't hadn't been finally presented mm -hmm. to for acceptance by the select boards to put on warrants for yeah. each of the four towns. Are the other towns putting this on? I don't actually know. I thought about that this morning. Um, okay. I don't actually know if they've all put it on. Okay. Um, I try to put on whatever Darius gives me, mm -hmm. and he knows what the time frame is. Okay. So. Well, I think it makes sense for them to do that. I mean, right. And if. We've been asking for it. They've been asking for it. Now, the question that came up in finance committee's discussion was, which funding sources could be used to populate this stabilization fund? Because if you read this right here, um, it says that they could use not just fund, funding sources or not just town assessments, but they could use other funds they have access to, right. like excess and deficiency. Right. They would put it, they would decide to fund it with some excess efficiency. School choice. School choice. Right. Anything like that. So so any capital stuff will come out of that fund. And then they could, you know, ask for appropriations from the town. That money could go into the fund as well to do the projects. So you might Thank get, you. I don't know exactly what to put on for explanation. So I reached out to Darius and see if he wanted to give me okay. anything. Sounds good. So I'll make a motion to approve Article 13 as written. I'll second it. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Um, and I have you doing this motion. That's fine. Yep. And then there's Article 14. So Article 14 is the creation of the Opioid right. Stabilization Fund. And we're going to create that. That sounds good. I'm good. We had this discussion earlier tonight, so we're all right. set for that. So all those uh, make a motion to approve Article 14 as written. Second. Second. All those in favor? Tim Ilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Naps, aye. And then we're going to pass over Article 15 for now? Yes. We're going to um, pass over Article 16, but have um, discussion, request discussion Hopefully. through the, through the um, moderator, if he'll allow us discussion on uh, Article 16 and 17, which will be bypassed. I, I I just think it's really important that we try to yeah see what 
See this the is the hardcore group that shows up at town meeting. Right. How do you all feel? How, how do you feel about moving it to Sound Bay? Yep. And then and then I think you know, and then we can post stuff yeah. online too and find out if what what the flavor is in the in you know people who don't come to town meeting would they come on a Saturday if they could? Would does there need to be child care? Like what what else could we provide and what could we do to help? So what I might do is write myself a note to ask Lisa, like I said before, ask Lisa and Dan. Yeah. Even if it gets passed over, it what okay. we do to invite comments from the audience. Right. Because the only thing I can think of is if we pass it over, um, we can't discuss it may, it. there may not be the ability to discuss. Right. And we want to find out how do we do that. So maybe we if if that's the case, maybe we leave it on, don't pass it over and, and ask everybody to not pass it <laughs> after discussion. Or you or you start the discussion and then you say, I, yeah. I'm going to make a motion to to uh, pass over this article. That might yeah. be the best way to exactly. do it is motion to in, to start the discussion and yeah. then make a motion to pass it over. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, actually, you can just table it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, table, right, whatever. Okay. Yeah, I asked Dan and Lisa what their preferred language to pass over, to deal with this situation where you decide you don't want to take up an article. And they said pass over. Mm -hmm. That's why you see that language. Right. Right. But I, I, I think because we want to do have a little discussion, we may have to table it. We might yeah. just table it. All right. Yeah. Check with Roberts. Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't know. I'd have to verify that. Um, article 18. Oh, article 18. We're moving. Oh, we're passing we over this article. This over. We did we've some already research, done it. and I had asked to have this research done before. Um, and when I talked to Wendy Hool about it today, uh, she had a couple suggestions for me, which will be incorporated in article requests for next right. year or for the next town meeting. But we, we, we've done this already, so we're we good. We did it, and okay. I hadn't put the note in what, yet, but it was accepted in year? 2007. 2007? Yep. Gosh, I don't ever remember that. I don't know that it had, changes happened after that, so right. they the last three years were much more significant. Mm -hmm. Right, with the voting changes, but I, I just don't even remember that, actually. Neither did I, Carolyn. Mm -hmm. um, so the next article 19 is uh, Anna Lee will be doing. Yes. And this has to do with the accessory apartment. So. Uh, oh, there is one change to this. Let me just scroll down. Hold on to your stomachs. Um, the quantum vote on this. Because it's accessory apartments, chapter 40A has a different majority requirement for this particular type of um housing thing what and is so it? normally you would expect a two-thirds majority for any zoning article yeah but with accessory apartments it's actually a simple majority so what i did okay. was i made that change after lisa corrected it she corrected me about it and then she gave me the general law reference which i also included in case anybody okay. asks it's yep. very specific to this type of activity. In order to avoid confusion, I assume that you're not going to have quantum vote in this. In other <laughs> words, there is no quantum vote. So don't tell people this is different because ordinarily it's a quantum vote, but it is because that's just going to confuse people. If, yeah. if well, it's a let simple me see what majority. They say, because in the warrant, I put two thirds which is when Lisa noticed it and said, I think it might be different, but she didn't get back to me until later yesterday afternoon. Right, and and so I would suggest in the actual language here, you don't say quantum vote. If anybody asks a question, then you say, well, ordinarily, but you know, planning board requires two thirds, but because this is a specific to general law chapter 40A section 51B, um, that's my, I mean, I, I, I love the second part of it. I just mean the quantum vote part's just gonna raise raise questions and cause 10 minutes of discussion unnecessarily. Well, that's why I was trying to reference the 
general law reference she gave you? Yeah, the, I, I love that part. I'm just talking about getting rid of the two words, quantum vote. Okay. Yeah, but check with Lisa. If she thinks we should have a discussion about this, that's fine. I just think it's, you know, if it doesn't apply, it's just gonna raise un questions unnecessarily. Okay. Um, okay, so I'll make a motion to approve Article 19 as written with some slight adjustment. <laughs> um, I'll second, second that. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And I think that's all we have. Last is uh, just a notification of, um, you know, our election. I brought some signs, by the way. Thank you. Um, so uh, for a general election, which would be... Um, the first Monday in the first day of May, right? Yes. Monday, the first of May will be the election. And then um, at 10 o'clock and the um, all the items that uh, all the positions that people will be voting for is uh, one select board member for three years, one assessor for three years, a constable for the term of three years, two Deerfield School Committee members for three years each. Um, one elector under Oliver Smith will for one year term, one Frontier Regional School Committee member for a term of three years, two planning board members for the term of three years each, one planning board member for the term of two years, one Tilton Library trustee for the term of three years, and one moderator for the term of three years. Thank you, uh, Casey and everybody for your work on this. Absolutely. I think the meeting will move pretty quickly. Hopefully we'll get through it pretty quick. Oh, um, one other item. Oh, we've got some other stuff to do here. Wow, we got a pile to do here still. Man. Yep. You do. Oh, oh Tim has through this. Okay. I'm clapping. Okay. <laughs> we need to hustle along. So um mosquito, mosquito district rental of town space agreement and signatory. I don't see it in here. Oh yeah, I do. We don't that. have an agreement. I because I don't even know where to start, Trevor. Okay, can we when take this Carolyn up? Carolyn and Trevor? I talked about it. I thought DCAM is actually the signatory. Is that right, yes. Carolyn? Yes. So we need contact information so that we can All right. But, but the idea time. is just to get consensus that you all are okay with it. I'm fine with it. If you guys are all fine, if Casey's fine with it, I'm not going to all right. The uh, just just if you took three years of electric costs, heat costs, custodial costs, which was them going all the way all the time, which I don't feel like that's necessary, mm -hmm. um, and water, um, it, you and you divide for the three years, and then you divide it by three, it comes to six thousand six hundred and fifteen dollars and sixty eight cents, which I think is too low. So, I'm 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 saying that we would just send the cleaner people over there once a month and we would um, just, and I think we should charge at least $10,000 for that space. Sounds Is that okay? It's fine. All right. Yep. So how much a month? Uh, well, if we, it's just yearly lease is 10,000. All right. So like, well, if Kevin, what Kevin did, this is, this is when the senior center was going and then we had, nobody there and then we had um just storage of records and then we had curative there so if he did what he did is took the three years of all the electrical all the heat all the costs in other words custodial and water and then so uh, he added them up and then i for the three years and then i divided it um and it came to only 6600 well six six thousand six hundred fifteen dollars and 68 cents but you know, who knows what heat's going to be? Who knows what electricity? Person's hardly going to be there. But I, you I also need to have Wi-Fi over there. Yeah, and and I think we should cover our costs. So I'm I'm just saying yeah. ten thousand, and that way the building is occupied because um, curative was there doing the test till December thirty first. If the mosquito district moves in, you know, moves in their traps and stuff. At least there's something there. And and the historical records are actually not leaving for another week or two. So there was there was no time that that building was actually empty. So I feel like for us there's a huge advantage, and and we should cover our costs without being excessive, but we should cover our costs. So that's why I was thinking ballpark ten thousand, and then 
they could rent it from us and and just we would authorize Casey to work with DCAM to I, come I, up with the contract. Yeah. yeah. I don't okay. know what the we'll process is going to be, but bring it back I mean, to approval then. Yeah. We're good. Yeah. So one thing I would say is we might it might be useful to find out what I don't think that that question of Wi Fi came up. So I don't know what an estimate would be. I would need to ask Pat um, because I don't know that Kevin had that number. No, he didn't. Um, it, it, that wasn't on here. He just okay. did electric heat custodial and water costs. Okay. Um, I, I know John Pachort when he was on Thursday when they did the visit, he said he was just going to have somebody put something up in that building. Because I guess it got taken down. When, the Wi-Fi? Yeah. The Wi-Fi moved. Pat has yeah. to order it again. Yeah. So that's why I want Pat, I want to ask Pat. Yeah, because just make sure she we does get that covered. ordering. Yeah. All right. So do we need to make a motion that we support the uh, rental of the space to the Mosquito District for $10,000 a year? Well, uh, do we want to wait and see it come back? I mean, I think they just consensus. consensus. We don't forward. actually have oh, to vote. Oh, just consensus yep. is fine. Yeah. 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 And then fine we'll back a contract to vote. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Okay. But I just want to give K Casey and make sure you all yeah. are on board with that kind That's of ballpark. Good. That makes it I mean, decent. It's a value. swifty yeah. couple thousand dollars in case something right. goes up. Yep. But we're we're definitely covering our costs. And I want okay. to make sure that that's... That's good. It wasn't kind of... Yep. Cost us more money in insurance or anything right. like that. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next item is the regional uh, Franklin Regional Retirement Board to add two percent to the cost of living adjustment. I don't know if anybody's talked about this. I mean, we we brought it up at a, at another meeting. There was some charts on this. Um, I think if we did it, if we did approve this, you know, the thing is that the retirees don't have any flex any fluctuation. It's not like it goes up and down each year. So anytime that they're, um, there are some years that that seniors don't get any, uh, seniors or retirees in, in this plan, um, they, they have a steady increase, a steady rate each year. So it's a, it's a flat fee, a flat increase that they get each year. Um, the uh, Social Security, some years they pay nothing and some years they pay quite a bit. Like this year was 8%. For many years, they paid nothing. But if you look at it overall, it kind of is pretty close to even, if not um, slightly under. Slightly under. So I, I kind of feel like, um, I, you know, I, I feel like supporting the retirees because they don't have any other way to get any adjustment in their pay to. Um, well, it has for to the be extraordinary. Living. Right. Right. I mean, they would bring it if it was extraordinary. And the last few years have been extraordinary. I mean, it, the in, inflation is a lot um, for them to deal with. So I'm, I'm in favor, I think, of approving this. And I think a lot of other towns have to, too. This is kind of getting a, I think if a, a number of, Casey, you could fill me in if this if I'm wrong here, but it, they're looking to kind of get a consensus across yes. most of the towns. They actually and, uh, need all the towns to vote. They need a certain amount of the towns to vote in order for this to move up. Right. Yeah. Did the finance committee talk about this, Julie? I don't no. know if they did. Yeah, I did bring it up and I gave them all the information, but I don't know if they've actually debated it all. Do you want to wait another couple meetings to, I don't know what the deadline is to vote on this. I'm happy to have their way and I gave them data on it, but I know they haven't had a formal discussion about it. Yeah, this is not something that ATM, we're not going to take this up. At, no, you're yeah. not taking no. this up at annual town meeting. What are your thoughts, Julie? Do you want a little time for your board to look at it and see? Yeah, we have not discussed it at all. You did give us that handout, but we yeah. haven't had any discussion at all on it. Yeah, well, if we can wait some time on this then, I don't know what the deadline is, but if I we can ask Dale. Okay, and just, you know, we could bring it up uh, again at, at another meeting fairly soon, but if I, I, I would I love to have say, plenty to I don't really have a problem with it either because this, I think this is not a regular, they only do this when there's extraordinary situations. Right. So if Tim is okay with it, then 
Casey could just find out from Dale if we have to do this in a couple weeks or something couple like weeks that or something just put it on our agenda again I'd just love to have Julie's team look at it real quick yeah to get their, yeah. their advice I think it's important that we all discuss yep. it okay so we'll just hold on that and get some a little bit more info um, the South Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Facility Phase 1 upgrades. This is change order 10 for review and signature. So I just, I know I talked about this a couple of times, but here's the time where we vote on it. Um, so this change order 10 would allow uh, Waterline Industries, who's, who's our general contractor on the pro property, um, to finish out the project. All the things that we, most all the things that we initially wanted to do originally in our $19 million appropriation, we went to the town last year and asked for an additional $3 million to kind of complete out the project. And this is going to allow us to finish out um, the secondary clarifier launder ladders. So it allows them to get down into the, into the secondary clarif clarifiers or ladders if they need to do some maintenance there. Um, and then for cleaning and maintenance. Um, and then uh, operations building roof replacement, which is about, so that the ladders was 2,305. The operations roof replacement, which is the flat roof on the main building um, that has been there since the 70s or so, um, that's $112,695.25 to redo that. It's currently leaking, leaks over some electrical stuff. It hasn't been done in years, and it's, I think, with all the investment we've made in the plant, I think it's, you know, that's where everybody operates out of. So I think it's important to kind of do that roof. Um, the entrance security gate, so we would have um, gates there uh, to block off so no unauthorized people can come in. Um, you know, come in, hit your code, the gate opens, you can get in and work the plant, come out. So it, it allows us, a lot like we have fobs here, it allows us to know who's going in, when they're going in. You know, nobody can just go in and pick up equipment and leave. Uh, so I think it's a smart, smart way to do that. It's 26,241. And there, there's more gate to just that, more fencing to than just that one gate. Um, and then the big part of this is the $2,147,106.48, which is the North Aeration Tank modification. So already in phase one, um, well, actually, phase two is the south aeration tanks is what, what we're doing is kind of dividing up the big box that people see into four sections and having um, cement posts there with new aeration, smaller aeration items on it instead of the big ones that are there. We got a grant from uh, Eversource because we're going to be more energy efficient. We can tear them up, tear them down so we're not running them full Whoa. speed. So it allows us to do that. How much so, was that? Uh, I want to say that was like a couple hundred thousand dollar grant. Wow. So it was a it was pretty good good sized money um, to do that. So always planned. It was the heart and lungs of the treatment process and ensures the town plant um, can handle future fo you know flows and loads and 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 allows us to you know be redundant. We have two different items um, to to use that. And then it's uh. And what, one other change is portable water line to the Headworks building. It allows us to have a uh, backup measure for plant watering system for redundancy. And that's what washes all the, the, um, the head, all the junk that comes in into that screen. The water kind of rinses all that off. And we have extra backup for redundancy there. Uh, there are polymer injection points, small money, but um, it provides the operators flexibility for thickening the sludge. So that's where they do the injections to thicken the sludge. Um, it's just kind of injection points in the line. That's only $2,600. Yeah. Yep. So wow. it makes sense to do. Um, yeah, of course. And then, uh, <clears throat> believe it or not, a flagpole. So <laughs> we're, again, we're using up this money because it is, uh, it's grant money to get, to get that grant money done. Um, but it's important to have a flagpole. We thought, you know, it's a, it's a, um, it's part of our, part of our town offices, um, and then a site entrance headworks and grading, which is kind of redoing the paving there, doing grading and also being a good neighbor. The, I want to just shout out to the neighbor of that plant. They have been so gracious and kind for all the truck and traffic and construction that they've had to deal with by their home for the last three years and going on another year now. We did remove uh, a, a line of trees along that um, 
headworks plant because we didn't want them falling on it, but it really left really scraggly trees left. Um, so the idea is to kind of build a, a bit of a berm with the excess dirt that we have there and put some arbovitis on it to kind of create some privacy between the neighbor and the plant. And I think it'll just, it makes sense to do that along with grading and there's, um, water issues we've had from the fields get very wet down at that back corner by the river and a lot of that water kind of leads into our plant so it's kind of adjusting that and dealing with the um the, the water flow to get it you know into drainage right. and dealt with so that's kind of finishing up all of that in the creating of the plant so this this will kind of complete the plant and um the total change order, and it allows us to work with water line we don't have to go out to bid again it's a change order uh, they've been wonderful. I mean, they are on target. And um, other than, like, I'll say that one electrical piece that can't get us power to all of our stuff yet, because um, because of COVID and lead times, we're waiting on that one transfer switch to be able to get power to the plant, turn it on. We're going to start doing some temporary power just to get like headworks going and stuff. But that will be here. It's supposed to be here in May. So we're fingers crossed that's going to be here. That's the latest. That's the latest is May. Yes. And everybody's like on pins and needles, hoping that's going to be it. It was supposed to be like a year ago. Um, so this change order is uh, $2,376,857.53. Um, and that would bring the contract price incorporating the change order to $18,884,000. $940.63. So does Happy that trigger the, um, that triggers the grant, right? Yes, yes. It, get, okay. it gets, um, and I've been going over half flow <laughs> with um, Brendan so Casey. Going? We met today okay. on all that stuff. So what we're hoping to do is, so we had authorization for borrowing for the next $3 million. We're hoping with that, with Excuse closing, me. sure, with closing the two loans, where one loan is going to close the first one, the eight million five hundred sixty nine thousand dollar loan should close May twelfth. That's what we're we're banking on, and then as soon as we spend up uh, the additional two million nine hundred eighty seven thousand, we can close loan two. Then the grant starts paying, which is two million six hundred and four. So once all of that gets done. We think our cash flow is going to be good enough that we do not need to possibly don't need to go out and borrow that other three million because the grant money is going to come well, in. That's what I was hoping. That's what we're all trying to at okay. worst, Sarah may have to borrow a million for like six months or something like that, or a few months while we there there's this time between June and August of this year that our cash flow may exceed kind of the money we have coming in if we can't close that second loan. But I, we think, Brenda thinks, DPC thinks, we all think we'll be able to do it, but Perfect. it's just kind of right on the edge. And uh, that we so, do we want a motion to approve? Oh, yes. Yeah, sorry, I jatted for a long time there. Yes, I make a motion to approve change order 10 in the amount of $2,367,857.53. I will second. second. Oh, All right. Okay. Go ahead. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Mm -mm. All those in favor? Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you both so much. And thank you to the town for supporting this project. I'm really excited to see it finish up. Uh, it's a beautiful plant. And I'd love to have a tour when everybody's, when it's done and everybody can come and see, see what we've done there. It's pretty impressive. Um, okay. So moving on. Um, the next item was Weston and Sampson Engineering Services pr proposal for the Old Deerfield Wastewater Treatment Plant options. I, I understand, Tim, maybe we're on hold on this for a little bit. Yeah, um, basically this, the, the current version of this is the original version. I've sent back comments on this to Casey and Chris. Uh, they haven't been shared with Weston and Sampson yet because I know that Typically, we rewrite these contracts with contractors so that it reflects Massachusetts Indeed. regulations and so forth. Yep. But in the interim, um, once we communicated to the private schools that the plant had to be able to process 250,000 GPD of wastewater, um, they have asked us to hold off until April 28th. Okay. They're not sure whether they're going to pay for the uh, the, the fee, the 12895 or whatever it is. Okay. Uh, so 
that seems fine. I've communicated with Weston and Samson that the private schools have asked us for a delay. Okay. Um, and um, I don't know if it makes, <clears throat> let's get the sense of the board. Does it make sense for Casey to try and have town council rework this if we intend to, if the, if the schools don't pay for it, do we intend to pay for it ourselves? And, you know, so that's the question. Uh, I'm, I'm, open, I'm open to um, comparing new technologies, but it, it needs to be the same 250. Yeah, yeah well, we've already made that decision. Yeah. So I think so, we just hold, you know, a couple of weeks and see see what comes, uh, see no what rush. shakes out. Yep. Okay. Yep. That's fine with me. I just didn't okay. know if there was any advantage to getting this thing over. I guess we need to wait and see if they're going to pay. I was just trying to get a sense from the board of whether we would pay for it if they don't pay for it. Right. And uh, I would probably hold a bit because that you know just without knowing what that plan is that they have. Right. You know. Okay. What I mean? Yeah. Okay. Um, sounds good. That's good. Um, the next is the House amendments for sewer operation special legislation language, and I know this was something Tim was keeping his keen eye on about what it said and about the more than or less than the 25%. Are we good with this or is there anything else we need to? I have an update from Chris. All right. Hey, Hello, Chris. Chris, welcome. Hello. So um, I did some work on this today. We were able to determine what the error was. The error was that the wrong version of the bill had been submitted uh, by the town clerk's office back in the fall, immediately after the special town meeting. Uh -huh. um, we were able to clean that up, make sure that it reflects the correct language, and I've included several different versions in the red folder that you have for signatures. Um, okay. There's the intro letter, which could use a signature from you, Trevor. Okay. Um, and then there is the there are the two uh, homeworld petitions themselves, which have the either the corrected language entirely in the sense of that's what was voted on. Um, the sewer bill does not have the corrected language from House Council because there was still a little bit of back and forth on what was advised by our legal counsel on that. However, I've been given advice from Corinne and Natalie Blaze office um, that if we are approving any of the language or all of the language that House Council has suggested instead, um, that can be attached on a separate sheet that's also signed by the town clerk. Or the acting town clerk in our case. Um, so I know it's a lot. If what I just said makes no sense, please let me know. Um, makes sense to me, Tim. Okay. So um, what's in my package is incorrect. Correct. It is. It is incorrect. Um, what is in the red folder was fixed today. And that's the red folder that Trevor has. Yeah, do you want us to Correct. read, Tim? Oh, why don't we read that so you feel... Section comfortable. 5, in particular, I want to see read. Okay. Let me just uh, read that one. Thank you. Sure. Thank you, Tim, for for jogging on this. And thank you, Chris, for finally solving this mystery. Absolutely. Uh, thanks again, Tim, for catching that. That was a very good catch that we're glad wasn't allowed to go further in the so we removed the any pers person injured. I'm glad we got rid of that. Um, section five, the town shall by vote determine what proportion of the cost of said system or systems of sewage and sewage disposal the town shall pay, provided that it shall pay not more than 25%. Less is crossed out, Tim. And it's got a period? Yep, and 25% period in providing for the payments of the remaining portion of the cost of said system or systems for uh, or for the use of said systems or systems system or systems the town through its select board acting as the sewer commissioners may avail itself of any or all the methods permitted by general laws and the provisions of said uh, general laws relative to the assessment apportionment uh, division reassessment, abatement, and collections of sewer assessments to liens, therefore, and to interest thereon shall apply to assessments made under this act. 
the collector of taxes of said town shall certify the payment or payments of such assessments or apportionments uh, thereof to the said select board, which shall per, uh, preserve a record thereof. That's yeah, that seems that. fine. Yep. And you mentioned that we didn't approve the the, um, the, the right thing about liability section four. We crossed out any person injured in yeah. their property by any action of said select board under this act may recover damages from said town under said chapter 79 that was crossed out right because town town council advised me i think tim was on that email too um that that was not voted by town meeting so it cannot be included right right and the other thing is i'm not sure i want to have that liability no right. i agree no, no i already said we weren't going to do it yeah that right. was suggested that's, yeah that's that's, that's that was one of the changes platform. suggested by house council um right. which all the town meeting really gives them clearance to play with if they want is clerical changes and we right. definitely right. think that's a lot more than a clerical change yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's a, a fundamental change, change in the request <laughs> that's a huge liability that's if yeah. somebody right. trips in, the, in their own yard, and then we get res we're responsible. That's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, I'm fine with that. I'm gonna co I'm gonna actually come in and read it tomorrow to sign it. But if you okay. guys want to sign it tonight, we signed it, yeah. and we'll leave it for you here in the in the red folder. Yep. Thanks, Chris. <clears throat> yep. Thank you. Thank you all very much for Thanks, bearing Chris. with us through that. That was. A lot yeah, of small a, details. There was a lot going on. So. I I started it, and I made sure that Chris finished it. <laughs> Okay, the, the next item is the uh, memorandum of agreement for storage of Deerfield's historic documents and town records. I thought we approved this already, didn't we? There was a language question that uh, Carolyn and I discussed today, and it came from a comment from council. Um, so, PVMA had added a clause about insurance. Okay. And I found out later that it was an optional thing, but council yes, brought the, it to my it was, attention. If we would desire to have insurance. Okay. Great. What I explained to Casey is that this this is the documents are like charter mortgages and stuff. There's no way to reproduce them. So if we had insurance or we wanted to buy insurance, all that we would get is the cost of paper because there's the cost right. that you're insuring is reproducing those records well there's no way to reproduce it this is minuscule kind of stuff oh, Chris, so, so we would not use the option to insure chris do you have a the um peter thomas had brought in a drive with all of those documents on it do we have a cop do we have that somewhere i do have the drive um okay i, would I actually that's a that. that's a good nudge that um Yep. Yeah, I still, if I still need to get those website, somewhere else. Yeah. If you okay. can link it up on their website, then if people can get it electronically. And I would love sure. to get a yeah, copy. Yeah, happy to spearhead that. Great. Okay, perfect. Um, let's see, next item. Um, so there, so, we, did, so we're, we voted to, we got to make a motion to vote. Oh, I thought we already did. Okay, so let's re-vote. So I'll make a motion to approve the memorandum of agreement for storage of Deerfield's historic town records between the town of Deerfield and Pocumtuck Valley Memorial Association. I will second that. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Governor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Thank you so much for everybody's work on oh, Thank finally you. getting it done. And, uh, Peter came over yesterday and said the it's perfect timing because the the uh, drainage is starting to fill up. He's been turkey based during the water out just to make sure we're. Well, you know, it's just, just I good told, timing. I, that's why I wanted to get the records yep. out before spring happens. Um, yeah, we got 10 days of rain coming. Oh, really? Yikes. Um, I mean, we need the rain. I'm glad for that, but it's, yeah, we want it, want it done. Um, example, the, uh, there is legislative priorities, STAM. Is there something here on this? Or is that just kind of some sort Hold of- Hold on, there is actually. Um, it's, this is sort of a preview thing that I had worked with my colleagues on. Um, so let me show you what our legislative affairs committee has done because the members of that committee 
have asked that we share these with our boards and refine what each town might want to pursue within what some of these options. So I'm going to screen share this. Okay. Oh, there it is. Okay. So this is what our legislative affairs committee came up with. And so there's several things that came that we talked about during the Western Mass Conference. Um, the rural factor for any type of initiative is a key thing that people want to bring to the legis our legislative groups attention more emphatically. Certainly payment in lieu of taxes for many communities is a priority. Deerfield, maybe not so much, but this is an example of what we've talked about, what we've heard from our peers and what we're trying to pull together for basically informational purposes that then we could create our own. And I'll show you what Carlisle did. Um, and there's another piece of this that's technical assistance and funding for town clerks to meet the requirements of the votes act because yeah. it's expensive it's time consuming and it's one of the reasons town clerks are are quitting in droves so the other pieces are chapter 90 and this municipal building assistance authority that's been a hot topic with our group but also a hot topic from what we heard at the western mass conference in early April. So we took a lot of that information and sort of compiled it into this kind of an easy to read document. Um, and then this, this last piece in the second um, portion of the, the page is hybrid and remote public meetings. So there's really a lot of discussion about this, but fundamentally, I think what I've heard both from my peers and other people is, we need to have some consistency where we're not being forced to just do hybrid meetings or just do remote meetings. And it would be nice if the legislature would not completely treat this as an unfunded mandate and allocate funds to towns so that they can beef up their technology. Yep. Some of us did it with CARES Act funding, but other towns did not. And so if they don't have the resources to provide this hybrid connectivity, then there's less incentive for them to do that. So this was the STAM draft. Let me unshare this and share the Carlisle draft. So the chair of our committee is Ryan McLean from Carlisle. And Ryan put this together Um, and it really takes what his board has been discussing in context of some of the items that were identified in that last document I showed you. So one of their main priorities is chapter 90 formula. It needs to be revised. Yeah. Um, this municipal building assistance authority is their second priority. And for us, I think that's a huge priority. Well, and then... I know that the board has talked about this hybrid remote meeting provisions, how this would work, um, because it's not just affecting our regular committee meetings. This has an effect on our town meeting as well, Yeah. because we uh, have the opinion that we have to provide accommodation um, for town meetings in a certain way. And actually, Chris and I were talking about that earlier because we requested or we notified the public that they need to identify if they need an accommodation and then we have to make sure that it follows the guidance that the civil rights group at the AG's office and the AG that monitors town meetings approves of. So this is it it's sort of a bigger thing than just yeah. open meetings. It is. So this um, I just wanted you to see this because I think at some point we should circle back around um all well, the I, all the people that are on the legislative affairs committee really want to start getting the word out um and what we've done is we got some help from a couple of other stam members to actually correlate who our legislative teams are with specific towns 
so that we have the ability to shoot out this information and in a more effective manner. I mean, we've also talked about taking this information to the state house because in some ways that's the only way for us to get FaceTime. A lot of small towns don't get FaceTime. And so much of what you see has followed what the Rural Policy Advisory Committee submitted, but also what came out of our Western Mass Conference and what we've discussed as individuals. So I wanted you to see it. Um, at some point, I would like the board to circle back around and maybe think about what what Deerfield might want to produce in terms of a short document like this. I already know at least one of them is going to be on there. Well, I, I have to say that my only problem with the municipal building one was that a million dollars doesn't even hardly pay for the plans. And to think that that's going to solve the problem is ridiculous. They need to set up a building authority similar to the school and the library programs that are funded through bond bills. So at least 50% or more of the building is covered um, by this building authority. That's why we want to advocate for it, Carol. Okay. I mean, I that's the, the entire purpose. We all agree with you. There's not enough, a million dollars is not enough money to do much. Right. Right. So it's if they created this bond piece, hardly put in office, the door. that would be great. I know. I, it's ridiculous. And that's million total for the state? No, a million for project. They're, they're, they're going to have right. a big bill, and then you can apply for a million bucks. Well, a million right. bucks doesn't get you hardly anything. And mm -hmm. that's why Legislative Affairs wants to get certainly the committee members to take this to their boards, but pass this out to the entire STAM membership with the intent to have them decide you know, do the same thing, take it to your select boards and then respond to your legislative teams. Casey, could you show me the other one? Yeah. Go back to the, your first one. Mm -hmm. Hold on one sec. I think that's in the package. It is. This one? Yeah, I mean, basically, I think that the first part is certainly rural factor and payments in lieu of taxes. I mean, <clears throat> they're equally important. I mean, the state owned land, unfortunately for Deerfield is not, but I mean, I know that there's a house bill for payment in lieu of taxes for nonprofits. And, um, you know, that's one thing that I'm trying to figure out with uh, Natalie Blay, who, who is the sponsor of that legislation and how do we support it? Because um, voluntary compliance, compliance with payment in lieu of taxes is never going to work um, with nonprofits. And so, um, anyway. <clears throat> so, finding the bill number and following the bill, one of the things I learned last, last week in the seminar I went to was um, we can do searches. They showed us how to use the website, the legislative website. Yeah but also starring the bills that you want to follow. So we could actually sit down at some point and go over that if you want. Yep, once, I do, once I make sure I know how to do it. <laughs> yep, I do think I have the number of the bill or at least the first number of the bill because sometimes bills change number during the session. They do and they change, they change often is what we were advised. Right. So this okay. is really sort of a first read. This is what people are talking about. Um, uh, and for STAM members, we're just trying to really get some consensus from our boards that we want to, fo to follow up on some of these items because they do affect most of our towns. Well, th this is uh, timely. Uh, my um, Tomorrow, I'm chairing the meeting at FERCOG for the council. And um, one of the items to talk about is prioritizing um, the rural policy advisory committees. Yep. Kind of Things. So some some things in Eastern Mass don't really line up with what we're doing, but it was all just kind of figuring out what Franklin County's priorities are. So that'll be a, a topic. And once that list is kind of done, I'll, I'll bring it back to the group as oh, well. I forgot. Yeah, that would help too. I forgot that you're not going to be here. Is yeah. there going to be a problem uh, on our posting if I um, stay home tomorrow in Zoom? Did we, we posted for hybrid, right, Chris? Yeah, but Tim's at home. I... For COVID. I don't have COVID, but I, I have a cold and I feel like I should just stay home tomorrow. 
I knew it was I just. I think we posted for hybrid. I, so if it's posted for hybrid, can't they all still be at home as long as the space is available if somebody were to show up and want to attend in person? I mean, if, if Kate, if, if um, Carolyn stayed home and nobody else was going to be in, I mean, I'm going to wear a mask to annual town meeting. Yeah. And I could come and sit in a chair if that's what's necessary. Whatever works best for folks. Um, right. I mean, I think, yeah, anything would work. We posted for you guys just in case. Yeah. So well, I have the CPC meeting at five o'clock and then we have. Yeah, we have CIPC at five, planning boards at 530, when they're going to talk about the A&R for Hamshaw and the Leary lot. Right. And then six o'clock is when we have the info session. And I have seven o'clock senior housing. So and planning planning board members are going to be in town hall, right? Yeah. Yeah. So well, we should be okay. Actually, I don't know yeah. that they're going to be in town hall. Was it? No, Denise person? wasn't going to be in. I think Denise, because she, she's. Yeah, gonna, I think the planning board may have been remote. Let me double check real quick so I know what I'm yeah. talking about. Mm -hmm. I, I'm trying not to screw this up, but I, I was just thinking. Since I have four meetings in a row, it just kind of made sense to do them on Zoom and then just stay home so that hopefully I, I would shake the cold by Monday. Um, we might this have to just check. just a regular cold. This is not COVID. Planning board is just remote. Okay. Okay, yeah. So I think CB, I, just yeah, let I me know if I have to come down, I can come down. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Thank you for your flexibility, Tim. Yeah. So next item is a placeholder for Wendy Hewell, interim town clerk. I know we're going to appoint her for uh, supervising the town meeting this year. We can't thank her enough for her willingness to help. Um, do we need to do that tonight or is that something we do at annual town meeting? So there's two factors here. Wendy and I talked about it this afternoon. Um, there's also processes that have to happen after town meeting. Mm -hmm. So it's probably a good idea to name Wendy as the interim town clerk for purposes of um, administering town meeting and doing all the reporting because you have a zoning okay. article that has to right. be reported to the AG's yep. office. Yep. Okay. But during so town meeting, we are going to have to do a nomination and election for a clerk to town meeting. Okay. Like we did last year. Yep. So and motion to we've approve. talked that through with council, Wendy, and Dan, yeah. and staff here are starting to put together all the necessary documents. I'll make a motion to approve Wendy Hewell as interim town clerk. I will here. second that, and I think we really need to say thank you to Wendy. Yes, can't yes. So unbelievably nice of her. And we need. She's to get been a incredibly in the helpful <laughs> and complimented all the staff on on really you know, what we're doing in light of the fact that we don't have a town clerk. Yeah. Um, it's, I mean, all, all she's those been so amazing. I can't Tim say. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn Ness, I. All right, good. Just didn't want to forget that. Um, there's Not no to talk over you, Casey, but that's okay. Yeah. we want this meeting over. I, I'm, yeah, I'm you looking at you. You can do the whole adjourn thing, too. <laughs> yeah, I, are we good? Do you want to give an update? I know you've been working on a ton of stuff, so I, we all know what that is already. So, I don't so know. some of it you see in email, but yeah. really what's been the focus is putting together the last documents for town meeting. Right. Um, work. We actually have, I was telling Trevor earlier, we've got three different documents related to motions and the guide, and it's really been difficult for the last two days to sort of manage that because the officials want it a certain way you ha we provide the guide in a certain manner so i may come to the board later and say look we need to streamline this yep that's fine um, so one thing that i want everybody to know in the guide is i went back and i looked at my notes the request to put the anti -hate, the select board's anti-hate statement good that's been included um, we're also putting in committee vacancies, both moderator appointments and the select board appointments. So Pat and I went through the list to the best of our ability yep. and have created a list. And so there's this section called select board announcements. Yep. Um, it's right before you get into the table that shows the articles and who's doing what. So um, if there's anything else y'all want me to include, you need to tell me now. Um, can I just I because I promised Deb uh, Deborah um, Yaffe uh, 
How is the Human Rights Committee coming? Do we have any applications for the Human Rights Committee? I don't have any applications, but remember, you guys wanted to go back and look at what they had suggested and chew on how you could create that committee. Okay. So, so and I think when we talk to it's them, gonna Chris, be a, correct one of me the listed wrong. ones or not? I think we just do it right after town meeting regroup on that. That's okay. what yeah, I, I thought so was too. the discussion. Yep. Okay. Right. Yeah, just something to regroup on, I think. Um, I think there was still a little bit of question as to how the select board wanted to frame it exactly, um, if it was going to be called a human and rights I'm fine committee. With that because we, we wanted to do more educational outreach, so we yeah. wanted I wanted a more complete mission statement. Mm -hmm. So that's fine. But if we could, sure. could we just say that we were talking about um, that and, and we are going to work on it after town meeting. Yeah, I could put a sentence in or a yeah. phrase in that yeah. says, "Thank you." The select board is working to develop a human rights committee. Yep. Um, Don't let me forget, Chris. The only other thing, and I know I, I've talked to you about this, and and we may not have a solution for it. But we're trying to work out uh, AV services at town meeting, like get stuff up on the screen, and we don't have anybody. Frontier doesn't do it. You know, every time we get there, they're like. Mm. We don't have anybody that does this. You know, we always expect yeah. her, uh, FCAT to do it. They don't, they do sound. They don't do visual. So, I mean, they'll do video visual, but not like producing stuff on a screen. And so we need to figure out who could do that. We should fund that each year and make sure that we have a professional screen that has our name. The articles are up there and, you know. We just need to get working on that. I don't know if we'll have something this year or not, but we need to figure something out soon. Yeah. So we're going to do the best we can right yep. now with staff. Yep. I know you will. Um, I can't guarantee that it's right. going to be perfect, but we will try. Yep. Because you need the, the biggest logistical problem is being able to run this, Right. to run a uh, whether it's a PowerPoint or just a mm -hmm. PDF. Right. With each article, the biggest logistical problem is somebody has to sit next to the projector to do it, to right. have a computer to run the run the, the presentation. Right. Which means it takes you away from something else you might be doing. Right. And because we have to deal with the ADA accommodation question, we already have to make adjustments in who's doing what. Yeah. So Chris and I are going to be working to make sure we have as much of that setup done as early as possible on Monday afternoon. Yeah. Because we have this list of what we have to come up with and be able to carry with us to yep. provide this the, these services, make sure that the moderator and council can see anybody that requested accommodation and then make sure that there's a particular person communicating directly with these people. Yeah. Um, so, and there's other parameters we have to think about. Dan had asked for us to be able to provide um, the articles on, on the big screen for them to see, for attendees to see. And I don't think that's the bad ask. I think it just means I have to make some adjustments in uh, what gets presented. It's a question of who is doing it. Yep. I, we I only have that. a certain number of people. So yep. I need to get through the motions and then I was going to work on that. All right. So before we. But yes, you're right. We should have something comment? of that nature. I was just wondering, could you reach out to the UMass IT department? Yeah. I mean, they, they do that stuff all over. So the maybe we could. Yeah. UMass IT, we'll look at that, see if there's somebody there could help us or someone could help somewhere. So we'll figure that out. Do the best we can. Maybe you service for yep. a student or something. Oh, yeah, that's a really well, good idea. Ask Chris. Chris is a good jack of all trades, right? <laughs> <laughs> He's got his laptop. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we had gotten um, Dogwood Audio for services at the fall yep. town meeting. We did. And, um, they will but be I there. I don't know that they have the capability to do this. Okay. Right. But we'll check. So, okay. Yeah, not that we have, can't that ask. Be. It's yeah. just. They may not have, have that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any further discussion? We're all good. Uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. I make that motion. Second. All those in favor? Camille Chi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Thank you. Thank you all so My much. My task list, list thanks you. Yeah. <laughs>